What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple unexpectedly released iOS 13.3 beta 4 to both registered developers and to public beta testers. So this comes at a very strange time on a Thursday and it came out at around 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, both of which are not really typical times for Apple to release software updates. But anyways, we do have the fourth beta here and this does come two weeks after the third beta and of course it did take a while due to the holidays, Apple very rarely releases software software updates on the week of a major holiday like we just had with Thanksgiving. But anyways, you can see the size of this update here. It came in at about 137 megabytes on my iPhone 11. Of course, that size will vary depending on your device and what firmware you come from. If you go ahead and check out the build number for beta 4 settings general about 13.3, you can see there we do have another A build at 17C5053A. So yes, once again, back-to-back -back A builds on beta 3 and beta 4 here of iOS 13.3. So we are very, very close to the final release. And before we actually go out of there, I did also want to talk about the modem firmware update as well. We do have a very slight update to the modem firmware version there. It went from 1.03.11 to 1.03.12. So if you were having cell connectivity issues, LTE issues, anything like that, those could be solved here with this fourth beta. Now, as for the changes in this update, of course we are on beta four, so you're not expecting any kind of new features or new outward facing changes. We are just going to get you know further bug fixes and security enhancements and things like that. Of course, it's gonna be all things that Apple isn't telling us. It's gonna be things we have to discover on our own pretty much. And before we discuss those things and also the performance and the battery life and things like that, let's discuss some pretty big Apple news that we got earlier today. So today, Apple made a comment on an issue that I've noted here on the channel a few times now, and that has to do with the location icon staying in the status bar, even when you aren't using location services, and even when you have your location services turned completely off. You can see it right there up in the top left. If I go down to my status bar, you can see it right there. The arrow stays. That's been a quote unquote bug that a lot of people have talked about for a long time, but according to Apple, it's actually expected behavior. And now we know exactly why that is, thanks to security reporter Brian Krebs, who wrote an article on this topic, which of course did lead to Apple responding. Even though it did take them a while, they did eventually respond. So here's a blurb from TechCrunch who broke this earlier today. Newer iPhones, including the iPhone 11 Pro, which Krebs used, come with ultra wideband technology, which Apple says gives its newer handsets spatial awareness to understand where other ultra wideband devices are located. Apple only advertises one such use for this technology, which is going to be users wirelessly sharing files over AirDrop, but it's believed that it may become part of the company's highly anticipated upcoming tag locating feature, which has yet to be announced. Of course, that is the quote unquote Apple tag that we're still waiting on. But they continue saying ultra wideband technology is an industry standard technology and is subject to international regulatory requirements that require it to be turned off in certain locations. iOS uses location services to help determine if an iPhone is in these prohibited locations in order to disable ultra wideband and comply with regulations. The management of ultra wideband compliance and its use of location data is done entirely on the device and Apple is not collecting user location data. So. Yeah, basically it's all expected behavior and that we're seeing that location icon due to that ultra wideband technology in the newer iPhones like the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. And with all that being said, Apple did also say that they're gonna be adding a new dedicated toggle in settings in an upcoming iOS update, basically to toggle off the ultra wideband technology in the iPhone. So uh, this is not a major issue like at all. It's nothing really that Apple did wrong. It's nothing wrong with the iPhone. It's really like a, a big PR thing. It's basically Apple having to do something because this story kind of got blown out of proportion. It's probably due to Apple taking so long to respond and not being very transparent and basically just saying what it was up front right away. But basically now you're going to have the option to toggle off the ultra wideband technology if you want to. Now, as for when that toggle could be added, I would think it would be iOS 13.4. However, it is strange that we got an update today after this article came out, after this report and after Apple responded. It is kind of strange that we got that update today and it was also at a, a strange time, a later time than normal. But I did look throughout iOS 13.3 beta 4 and I did not see such toggle or said toggle anywhere in the update at all in location services or anything. So my money is still on iOS 13.4. We may see that. We could also see it actually as early as iOS 13.3, the final version, the public release. 
uh, which I would expect to be released next week. I'll talk about that here in a second. But either one of those two updates, we'll probably see that new toggle added here. So I did just want to mention that firstly here in this video because that is very important and it does have to do with a future iOS release. But anyways, let's get back to iOS 13.3 here. So as for the bug fixes in this fourth beta, we can expect, like I said, multiple bug fixes and security enhancements and things like that. I would also expect more stability for the mail application as well. Mail app, of course, has been super, super buggy in iOS 13 as a whole. We've been seeing continuous updates to it, and I would expect that to continue here with the fourth beta. I know that some people still had the issue with where they 3D touch or haptic press on an email and then press forward. It would just crash their entire mail application, but that does seem to be fixed here. I did think that that was fixed in a previous version, but apparently some people still have that issue. If you do still have it though, it could be fixed here in this fourth beta. As you can see here, it works perfectly fine for me. And there are also other bug fixes as well for the mail application. And I did also address numerous other bugs in my video from yesterday where I spoke on iOS 13.2.3 and how annoying the bugs were in that update. Of course, most of the bugs in 13.2.3 are still present and still persist here in iOS 13.3. So hopefully they are fixed by the time the final version rolls around and let's go ahead and talk about when we can expect that final release here of iOS 13.3. So of course, today is Thursday the 5th. That is a very strange time for an iOS beta release. So that makes me think that maybe it won't come out on the 9th or the 10th like I originally predicted. We still could see it on the 9th or the 10th, but it could also be all the way up until the 12th. So I would think somewhere between the 9th and the 12th of next week is when we could see the final release of iOS 13.3. And if I had to predict one date, I would say that it would be Tuesday, December 10th. That's probably when we will see iOS 13.3, but of course it could be anytime early next week. Now, as far as performance and battery life goes here on beta four, I would expect it to be exactly the same as beta three. Now beta three for me has been perfectly fine in terms of both performance and battery life. I actually found my battery life to be slightly better here on iOS 13.3 compared to the latest public release, iOS 13.2.3. So hopefully that lasts, hopefully that continues to be the case even when the final version does get released at 13.3. Of course, I will let you guys know, I will do follow-up videos and you know reviews after a couple of weeks and things like that as well. But on the performance side of things, I would expect it to be about exactly the same as beta three. If not, not just a little bit better, of course, due to more bug fixes and things like that. But overall, not really too much changed here with beta four, nothing really specifically that I can point out that has been fixed in this update. I have checked a lot of the other bugs uh, from the past, from past releases, and it seems that some of them still persist. Some of them have been fixed, like the forwarding on the mail that seems to be fixed, even though that was fixed for me a while back. Some people were still having that issue, but just overall beta four here seems to be a very, very minor update, a very last refinement relates to iOS 13.3 before we get the final public release on what I would presume to be next week. And before I go, I did also want to mention that Apple's Clips application got a pretty big update today. For those of you who use this application here, you can see version 2.1. You can see all the changes there. I do have this installed. I don't really use it too much. I have used it a little bit, but let me know if you guys use it at all down in the comment section below. But basically this update adds support for Animoji and Memoji characters. So you can basically record videos with those heads of the Animoji or the Memoji, which is pretty cool. There's also new stickers and a lot of other improvements and changes as well, which you can read right here. I think the app is pretty cool overall, but I just feel like Apple's not really promoting it too well and not really showing off all the capabilities in this application. I feel like they should add more videos and just talk about it more. I guess just promote it a little bit more because I don't feel like a lot of people really even know what it is. I did cover it a while back, uh, but I just don't feel like too many people use it as much as they should because it's a really cool application. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.3 beta four. Not really too much going on, kind of just some last final refinements before the final public release of iOS 13.3, which should be out very, very soon. But if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do also subscribe so you don't miss when that final update does come out or if we get surprised with something crazy like a fifth beta, which I highly doubt would happen just because we had back-to-back -back a build numbers, but it's still a possibility. So make sure you guys do subscribe so you are staying up to date with all of the iOS updates. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.